Do you know how maces have malls? What do flails have? Literally what I'm going to be making today, that's what flails have. So I forgot to film the intro back at the garage, but I figure now's the perfect time to let you guys know that I got myself a crispy new 4K webcam. The setup right now isn't really ideal. The, the monitor right here is way too wombly. I can literally just go and it goes crazy. But yeah, I think the webcam opens up a lot of cool new possibilities. I don't really know what I would use it for yet. I'm not sure a Twitch stream would be interesting at all in my case, but if you guys have any ideas of stuff that I could do with the webcam, you know, let me know in the comment section. Let me know what you guys think, and I hope you enjoy the video. So here's our building supplies so far. We got this big, thick boy chain, which I'm pretty sure is Dick Cheney's rap name from back in the day. We got that young $6 shovel from Home Depot? Yeah, I remember, Home Depot or Menards. Uh, we got some angle steel. I think this is an inch and a quarter by eighth inch. Uh, we got a couple of these quick links and then we have a screw eye. Now a chain this thick for something like this from a structural uh, standpoint is completely ridiculous. You don't need anything even remotely this thick. But I got this super heavy duty hardware just so that it's a lot heavier and I think it'll hit harder. If you wanted to just have a big flail head and then use a chain like this like I used on the baseball bat, that'd be totally fine. Now I'm going to do my best to clamp this shovel into my busted vise. You heard it here first folks, next Teespring payout I'm getting a new vise. I actually, I actually had no idea if that was gonna work. Very glad it did though. That sawzall's no joke. Mark the middle, ish, and drill it out with a bit that is the minor diameter of this lag bolt. Someone taught me that one in the last video. That pretty much means this drill bit is the diameter that this would be if there were no threads on it. <laughs> ah, I forgot the best part. Now, to make sure this doesn't unscrew from the end of the handle, first gonna cut a line into the threads. And to screw the bolt in, I'm using this epoxy as a lubricant. Jeez, that is a forearm workout. Oh. All right, I think that's about it. I'm kind of out of breath. <laughs> so the way that cutting the line in here helps the epoxy to hold that in is that if I were to have screwed that in without cutting the line in there, once the epoxy dried, you could just unscrew this out of the epoxy. But when you cut the line into the threads, then once you screw this in, the epoxy fills up that line. So it can't turn side to side anymore, AKA unscrew. So that's locked in there for good. All right, screw I meet quick link. Do a little flippy, quick link, meet thick chainy. Done, beautiful. Perfect weapon. Nah, no, I'm just kidding. The one major rule about flails that I'm sure everybody knows at this point, but I still gotta say, you don't make the chain long enough that it can swing down and hit your hand while you're using the weapon. Even if you think you're really careful, it's gonna happen eventually. So this here feels pretty comfortable to me. So the chain and the head should be about 16 inches. I'm literally using one, two, three. <laughs> I'm using six links of chain. I paid like 30 bucks for this thing. Nah, whatever, there's no way I'm not using this chain in a whole bunch of builds now. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Cut this one. Oh man, that's an awfully hot coffee pot. <laughs> Now I'm gonna mark the angle steel every five inches. One, two. Now I've got four of these five inch sections and I'm gonna cut them out with the angle grinder. couple sections, put them together, make sure you're working on a flat surface so that the bottoms are even. Clamp them together. And now drill out all your rivet holes. And 
here's a little trick. This part of the rivet right here prevents the riveter from going all the way down. So you put a nut and it gives you a platform to pop the rivet. Now I just do the same thing here, here, and here. Looking good. And now I drill the hole for the quick link with the scariest drill on earth. I don't know if this is gonna work. <laughs> I'm scratching the heck out of this thing. I think I gotta fire up the drill press. Okay, it's all set up. Everything's as tight as possible. Now right now, the slowness is key. Because the angle steel is shaped like this, the drill is actually starting on the outside edges and then coming to the point as opposed to regular drilling where you start on the point and it moves its way outwards. It's not meant to be cutting like this, so I have to be extra, extra gentle with it. And also, tons of safety equipment. Let's do this. I think I thought I might have been able to do that with the yellow drill. Hecky no. Ha! Well, good thing I had this carabiner handy at the hardware store. Perfect fit. All right, now I'm gonna use a flap disc and I'm gonna even out all these edges, probably these edges on the side too. And in some way, I think I'm also going to add some extra shape to it. Make it look more like a mace head. paint job okay I lost my patience a little bit and I did swing this around a little bit so you'll notice the paint is a little chipped already but this is the striking surface there's no way the paint is gonna last on there anyways I'm not gonna worry about it now we're gonna do the arguably most important part about this whole entire build and that is deciding how much of this handle is devoted to the chain length to do that we're going to stretch it all the way down as far as it can go really pull it you got to make sure so now this point up is now the danger zone. If you're grabbing anywhere up here, you're at a risk of the thing swinging back and hitting you in the finger and very easily breaking your hand or your finger. So now we have to mark out the lower part of the handle as the safe zone. For that, I'm just gonna use some hockey tape. Mark it out, and then we wrap from the bottom to the top and then back to the bottom. Actually, I'm gonna do the bottom to top wrap with this white tape that I don't really wanna show through because I don't wanna waste my good black tape. I actually don't dislike the look of white tape. I think it looks pretty cool in certain situations. It's what I wrapped my tomahawks in. But there's a time and a place, and I don't really think it would look that great on this uh, particular weapon. All right, that looks good to me, but thinking about it now, if I were wearing gloves or something, I wouldn't really be able to tell when the friction tape ends, or it wouldn't be as easy. So I think I'm gonna wrap a little bit of paracord around here and then wrap it with the hockey tape, just so that there's like a lump that I could feel if I was wearing gloves. I don't think this really matters how we do it. It's just gonna get covered up. <laughs> well, it's a lump. <laughs> Definitely be able to feel that under a glove at least. Function over form, right? So if everything went well, I should be able to put my fingers right here and... It works! And I'm thinking the weapon build is gonna be pretty snappy, so I might as well throw the weapon test into this one too. Hope you guys enjoy it.
Ultra Man.